amazing session by Skyskill Academy, uh, talk with the industrial expert. Skyskill Academy is into the domain of automobile, electric vehicle, industrial care cam. So basically, upon upskilling in this domain, you will be getting much more amount of placements. So basically, today's topic is revolving around that. So it is on the topology of optimization in SOLIDWORKS. So to answer this, I welcome our industrial expert, Mr. Soumya Chaturvedi to the panel. So Mr. Soumya has a three years of experience in the domain of senior design engineer, and he has expertise in the software like SOLIDWORKS and ANSYS. So today's session will not only on the domain of your software addition, but also a roadmap to how to enter into the industry. So I welcome Mr. Soumya Chaturvedi. Okay. So hello, Tanmay. Hello, Soumya. Hi. So hello, everyone. Okay. Is my voice audible to you all? Okay. So one more thing I would like to add everyone. So kindly just uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself to ask the questions. So, so that we will be able to answer them then and there. So this is an interactive session. Uh, you, if you have any questions, definitely you have questions for that reason. You are here with us. So we have first panel. Mr. Sujit. Uh, Sujit, you can unmute yourself if you want to. Uh, Sujit, or else you can uh, type in your questions. Okay. So in the meantime, Sujit is typing the questions. Uh, we have one question. So what is topology optimization song? Okay. Uh, so basically, <clears throat> as you all know that if you are a good engineer, right? Okay. So it's basically about, uh, you know, like you have to make your design, which is much, uh, much more cost effective, which is much more efficient. Okay. And that can withstand all the, you know, the forces, the stresses that are uh, in the surroundings. So it's basically about optimizing the geometry. It's basically about, you know, uh, making design iterations one by one. So let's say you have first built the mouse. So actually I'm uh, going to show you something. So here you can see this is a part of the topology optimization. Okay. So this, this, you can see over here that this is the mouse. Okay. And it is basically topology optimized. So this, I won't say this is a 3d printed mouse, but it's, uh, you know, a mouse over there. So it's basically, <clears throat> it's handling all the pressure. So basically you keep it like this, right. And after that, when you are putting your hands, so basically you, the force is pushing it downwards. So if it is pushing it downward, it is going to withstand that, uh, you know, force of my hand over there. So also you can see this is hollow from inside. So this is like very much lightweight. So this is like what happens in the industries also. Also, you might have seen various uh, hypercars in the domain as well. So those hypercars, what they used to do is they, you know, instead of compromising with the power, they simply go with the... <clears throat> you know, like uh, reducing the weight of it. Okay, so that's the point uh, of the topology optimization over there. Okay, yeah. that's actually very keen to know, Soumya. So as the design address and you have said, so I think in the mechanical industry, it is very much needed right now, that uh, improvement in the statistic designing. Yes, yes. So that is the thing, guys. Like if you are... 
you can say if you are stepping into the design field okay and if you are just uh, you know entering the career or maybe pursuing the career as a design engineer it's it's fine that if you are making one of your designs so let's say we have another mouse over here okay so let's say if you are making this design this design is i can say that this is not lightweight okay this has various material over there which is you know which can be reduced okay then next is we you have this mouse over here so you can see all uh, like the difference between both the mouses over here okay so this is this one is the topology optimized mouse this one is non topological optimized mouse this yeah. may cost a bit more depending upon the manufacturing or uh, you know like if you can go with a 3d printed one yeah. it this may cost more but the overall thing is uh, it is much more cost effective it is much more like cost saving and on the top this is lightweighted so that's the overall point that uh, we are going to discuss today which is the topic topology optimization actually very keen to know because when i saw this mouse uh, i thought of this is as a gaming mouse but yeah while i using it is very lightweight and i will tell you that uh, in the long run this is what uh, the innovation or r and d processes take place and coming to our next question somya so i think uh, this question is from nitish sir what will be the outcome of this webinar <clears throat> so by the end of this webinar you will learn about the topology optimization next is you will learn how to do it inside solidworks so i am giving going to give you a very short uh, you know like session uh, for the topology optimization that how you can do that particularly in solidworks so that is uh, you can say the uh, you know the outcome as well as uh, you know like uh, how industry is doing it like so how in the industry this topology optimization is being focused on so that is what we are going to learn today yeah absolutely nitish i in the short format or in the simpler format i will tell you that uh, you are going to learn uh, you are going to upgrade more than what you have been after one hour so there will be there will be a huge difference in what you are at 7 pm and what you will be at 8 pm so uh, i think you will know the difference so the next question is with us with from krishna i think he is asking sir what are the major skills required to become a mecha designer me mechanical designer <clears throat> okay for a mechanical designer see the most of the skills you can say add let's let's compare first so in the earlier times like if you are a mechanical design engineer right if your title is a design engineer so basically what happens many of the people think that you are a cad engineer okay it's basically like that yeah so yeah. they think that uh, you are a cad engineer and you can simply you know like build the 3d models right. but in today's scenario what industry want is they want cad plus cae right so cad means you are designing the part you are designing the product but as a cae engineer you are designing it for the world like for the world means you are applying different forces applying different pressure on it like you are applying it in realistic you are applying all the boundary conditions on it after that you are seeing what is the result whether it is going to withstand in the uh, you know the current world scenario okay because see this mouse is there again let's talk about the mouse itself this mouse is there i am pressing it like this maybe <clears throat> so maybe i am pressing the mouse like this okay but let's say if tanmay is using it he might press it very hard like Correct. it depends it yes. depends user exactly. to user yes. so again how to see this in working so that is basically where your caa comes so mm -hmm. whether it will withstand different users mm -hmm. so i am let's say applying 1 newton of force let's say tanmay is applying 2 newton of force okay so will it break uh, in which condition it will break okay. it might happen that if i'm applying 1 newton of force on a continuous math uh, you know like continuously it might happen that it may uh, take a little bit longer to break yes but it will break okay so that is what we are going to see like number of cycles how uh, we are going to you know like uh, applying the forces on it and then we are seeing the results of it so that's what a ca engineer do so right now this is the demand right now as you can say that if you knows about cad you should also know about cae as well 
so basically we can sum it up that uh, to know also the practicality of those designs. Yes. Right. So that is what like, uh, you know, let's say in CAD you are making, but by mistake you have made it a smaller size. <clears throat> okay. Right. So it is not user acceptable. <clears throat> you right. you cannot handle it or let's say by default you have made it a bigger size. Okay. So I'm not going to hold it like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. So again, the thing is that it should be user friendly. So you can see that this mouse is fitting my palm perfectly. Correct. So again, that is the thing. Even if you say the curves of this mouse, this is also like going to fit my palm perfectly like this. Correct. Okay. And also this is like very user friendly. So I can simply click uh, on with both of the fingers over there. So I can simply click. But again, the thing is how much I can click. Like Correct. at what point, because this is a plastic body. Yes. So plastic, as you know, it can deform, it can break at certain points. So again, this is a plastic body. If you are applying multiple times, it at some point it will break. Exactly. What is that point? That is what we are going to see in CA. CA. <clears throat> yeah. So basically, uh, I will tell you uh, why there are so many so many analogies on mouse because Soumya is a senior design engineer, and uh, it is means his regular work, and he has been very much spending time with them. So his analogy will be more on the practical oriented which you see because analogy we used to give on what we are dealing with every day. Okay. So, so for that reason, we are able to understand very deeply about it. And I can totally relate on this. I will tell you because even we are also as an engineer, we are also using it on a daily basis. I think everyone can agree on it. Right guys. Okay. So here is a, uh, Len, here is another question, I think from Pawan. He, so he is asking, good evening, sir. Uh, I am design engineer looking to pursue my career in engine development. And the engine development field is always evolving to get high performance and good reliability. And also considering the cost of production, how can topology optimization can help me overcome the problem faced with using the conventional design methods? As an example, as an example uh, of mass reduction and weight distribution. Okay. So again, see if you are currently, uh, you know, like a design engineer and you want to pursue your career in engine development, definitely engine development is, you know, like first, what we have first, we have BS, BS one, BS two, BS three, BS four, then currently we have BS six, BS6. Right? right? So what is the thing over there? BS6 is basically regarding your, uh, you know, like reduce pollutants. Okay. So you have carbon monoxide over there. So you have to reduce that over uh, in the BS6 models. The thing for this is again, you know, like changing the integrity of your engine that might change because if you are using a BS4 engine and if you are trying to make it in a BS6 model, that can be possible. But if you are using a BS2 model and you are trying to make it as a BS6 model, that won't be possible. Okay. Because in the BS6, you can say that you are changing the integrity of that model. Like you are uh, making, uh, you know, less compressed so that there, if, if the compression is, uh, you know, like high compression is there in the less area, you can say that, uh, you know, the pollutants will be low. But again, at the exhaust side, at the catalytic converter over there, you might have, uh, you know, like different filters over there, which is like reducing the, uh, you know, all these pollutants. The major thing, uh, major issue over here is you can say that again, I'll, I'll take again, like example of this mouse only. Okay. okay. So since this is a hollow mouse over there, right. So again, you can say that uh, the design integrity of this, the structural integrity of this particular mouse is less, but again, it can withstand like how many times I, you know, thump on it or, you know, like a uh, pressure on it, it can withstand that force because the major thing is these are not your design. These are not designed like these, this is not designed, uh, you know, purposely. This is the stress plots. So you can see this is my force path actually. Okay. These are my force path. If I'm applying forces, it these you know the designs are going to distribute it. Okay. Okay. So, so this is the... yes. So this will absorb everything. So this is like you know sending it in different path. 
it is not concentrating at a center, but it is simply sending it to different parts. So if you are a, uh, you, again, let's come to back to the question. So if you are a, <clears throat> want to pursue as an engine development, okay, this is definitely going to work because you are not compromising on the power. I again say you are not compromising on the power of the engine, the output power of the engine. But if you are reducing the weight of the components, that is definitely going to, uh, you know, give you a hype on the power to weight ratio. If you agree on this. So I hope Pavan, your questions has been answered. Yeah, I agree. So uh, next we have Kainan. And there is a question that, sir, I have been working with SolidWorks for three years, but there are still some missing points. The most important example of which is the analysis section of the flexible object. How do you think I should work on this? I think okay. this should be the questions of majority of people. Like even after getting in the industry and working on it, they still feel that there is something to explore more. Yes. So again, like <clears throat> if I say for the flexible objects, okay, you can make them flexible or you, you can make them fixed inside, uh, you know, like inside, if we talk about SOLIDWORKS or ANSYS, you can make them flexible or you can make them fixed depending upon the material of it, as well as the boundary conditions of it. So the thing is, you have to explore it yourself. Like, again, it is like, Somebody, no, nobody has told that two plus two is going to be four or two into two is going to be four, right? So our point is to reach to that four, reach to that four digits, whether you are, uh, you know, adding two digits or you are multiplying two digits okay. or you are simply subtracting, uh, subtract, uh, subtracting, sorry, from let's say five minus one, if you are subtracting. So right. we initial, eventually we have to reach to the four digit, right? right. It doesn't depend on the method. My goal is to reach at four, right? Same goes with the, you know, like distance and uh, we have the equation. So distance equals to speed into time. You all know that. Yeah. Okay. Distance is fixed. So let's say I have to go 200 kilometers. My distance is fixed. If I want to reach there in one hour, what is what will be my speed? 200 kilometers, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the thing is, if I'm increasing the speed, my time will be less. If I'm decreasing my speed, my time will be higher, but the distance is still the same. My goal is to reach that from destination A to destination B. So that is the thing over there. So again, if you want to try this, uh, you know, like in the flexible objects, it's basically advice to, you know, like go into forums. So there are different online forums. There are different videos on the internet itself. So you can try with that, but do not follow those videos. You have to you know, like improvise on those videos. Okay. So how you can improvise? Let's say if they are giving one, you have to give two, you should be giving two. Okay. Also, like if they are choosing flexible, you should be giving it, uh, you know, like rigid, like a rigid body over there. So that's how you can explore multiple variants of it because the video answer, you know, yeah, yeah. what you don't know is what are the different features that you can apply inside that. So that's how you can explore that. Okay. I think Kenan, uh, the answer, uh, you already know, as you are already working for three years, the thing is the, there are no proper, uh, you can say step-by-step -step attributes means, uh, you will be, uh, you, you have to follow the basic idea, but you will be able, you have to do that, uh, by exploring things. So I hope, uh, Kenan, the answer was, uh, clear to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I think that uh, that comes to a, a interesting point somewhere. So in every aspect, you need to follow this, actually. Yes, it, actually it happens for every aspect. You need to follow these steps only because no. the overall thing is like, if you are following a video, okay, if you are right. following a video, let's say you are making a tea. Okay, no. if you are following the video, you are putting the sugar, but what if you are cooking, putting salt? Okay. Okay. Right. I got it. Got so it. it will change the taste. Right. Right. right? The, uh, you know, like, uh, if you are putting sugar in the tea, yeah. it will taste, uh, like according to as the usual one. Yes. yes. If you are putting salt, something different will come up. Yes. Just like that. You have to apply to those in the software's practices. Also, if you are following the video, it will give, it will be eventually giving you the same output. Yeah. 
So whatever is there in the video, you are getting the same results. Okay. But if you are trying to change something from one, if you are changing it to two, you might get some different results. And that's how you will explore like what is there in the software. Okay. I think uh, the goal is to uh, explore uh, in the uh, spaces. I think that's uh, you got clarified, right, Kenan? And the second question, I think we are from Dilan. And he has a question that uh, as a third year mechanical engineering students, what are the courses I need to complete to excel as a design engineer? I think it's better for yeah. you. Yeah. So I think uh, Dilan, as you are currently in third year, so you are already learning, you have already learned the majority of your skill set, like the heat transfer, the refrigeration, air conditioning, and the thermodynamics. So to implement those skill set in the industry, I think that is what is more important to learn. So I think you should able to explore or you can start from the basics uh, like AutoCAD, SolidWorks, CATIA. So these are your first step you should complete because the solid mechanics, the kinematic dynamics of machines, you will be implementing those skills in this software. So uh, you have done the theoretical part and the industrial approach. You just need to learn about the software applications. I think in that manner, by the end of your fourth year, you will have a great potential to compete in the industry. I hope Dilan that was uh, informative for you, right? Okay. Okay. So regarding regarding the module, I think viewer viewers are very keen to know how you you are you will be preparing a module on the SolidWorks software. Sure. So, so I'll uh, be sharing my screen. Yeah. And let me know if my screen is visible to you all. Yeah. So is the screen visible to you all? Okay, so basically you can see over here, this is a simple sketch. Okay, this is the sketching line over there. And here I have used the weldment option. You can see the, I have used the weldment option for creating a square tube. And the dimension of the square tube is basically 80 cross 80 cross five. So five mm is the thickness of this. Okay, after that, I've simply used a split line feature for creating three faces over there. Okay, you can see three faces, but inside this, there is a only one single face. You can see three faces are there. Okay. So the thing over here is on the left hand side, I have given the material, which is plain carbon steel. Okay. So this is the material which we have applied, which is a plain carbon steel. Next, what we are going to do, we are going to optimize this topologically. Okay, so let me show you how we can do this. Comes to SolidWorks add-ins and simply come to SolidWorks simulation. So when you're coming to SolidWorks simulation, basically you can see there is no simulation tab. It will open a simulation tab for you. So now you can see there is a simulation tab on the top as well. Okay, once you are in the uh, SolidWorks add-in, simply come to simulation. And here you have the option on the top, which is new study. Simply click on it and you can see on the left hand side by default, it has selected for the topology study only. So we are going with the topology study, hit okay. And you can see on the left hand side, now you have topology study module. So basically we have to give the boundary conditions first. So first of all, we are going to give the fixture. In the fixture, simply give the fixed geometry. So I'm giving fixed geometry as this and this particular part. Okay, so you can see these are going to be my fixed geometry over there. Next is we are going to apply load. So load I'm going to apply simply at this particular surface. How much I'm going to apply? I'm going to apply, let's say, 1000 Newton. Okay, so 1000 Newton downward force, I'm going to apply like this. Next is regarding the goals. So my goal over here is to get the best stiffness to weight ratio. Okay, so if you are clicking on this, now you get two options. So one is reduce mass by percentage. So mm -hmm. Tanmay is basically like how much you want to reduce the mass from it. Okay, if you are going to reduce 30%. So mm -hmm. 
so it will reduce you can see over here current mass of the object is 4.47 kgs okay final mass is going to be 3.1 kgs if you want to reduce by some value you can reduce mass by absolute value so let's say i want to reduce 3 kgs so you can see current mass of part is 4.4 final mass is 4.4 minus 3 1.4 okay let's reduce by some percentage so here i am simply going to select 40 percent so here now you are going to see the 40 percent of mass reduction from this particular object okay. so current mass of this object because i have given the material to it so if i am given the material it is basically calculating the weight of the entire object so okay. that is the weight which we are getting which is 4.47 kgs final mass is going to be 2.68 kgs Fine. simply hit okay <clears throat> after that we have manufacturing controls so here we can simply apply some preserved regions preserved regions are going to be the regions which i don't want to exclude so these two regions i don't want to exclude simply hit okay so now you can see <clears throat> these two are basically my fixed supports okay Fine. here i have given the force thousand newton force mass constraint 40 percent reduction i want Preserved regions are this pink one, which is highlighting. So these are going to be a preserved region. After that, as you all know, we have to create the mesh. So simply come to create mesh. And here you can switch between if you want a fine mesh or if you want a coarse mesh. So I'm switching between, uh, you know, like towards the coarse mesh because so that the simulation will complete a little bit faster. So now you can see the meshing is generating like this. So now you can see the meshing is completed. So this is the mesh over there. Okay. You can see the entire object is completed with the mesh. Okay. The next step is simply you have to run the simulation. Okay. Fine. So once we are running the simulation, so these are the boundary conditions that we give. One is the fixed support. Then we have applied the thousand Newton force. Mass reduction is 40%. Preserved regions are these. And after that, we are simply going to run this study. So simply come to run the study and it will run a study for you like this. So right now it is running the study. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I think uh, in the meantime, uh, this study, I think it, it will take some time students. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can add on to it. So any doubts in the iterations or the fixed line. So to accumulate actually in one session, if you will start from the very basics to advanced, it will be uh, taking more than three hours. So for that reason, we have sped up the designing process. Okay. And Soumya, there is one more question arise from my side. So yeah. uh, just a second. Uh, Sujit, uh, about the course module, I will say that SolidWorks is included in that in the vehicle design and analysis. So definitely this is included in it because mostly uh, in vehicle design and analysis, you will be, uh, as Soumya sir already have explained that, you need to have two skill set, right? About CAD and CAE. And in that, along with CAD and CAE, you are also getting a unique graphics course module. So definitely vehicle design and analysis comes, uh, consist of this module. Along with that, we have unique graphics, we have ANSYS program. So that's a IIT Kanpur certified course. I think uh, definitely at the end of the program, I will explain more about this. So uh, the question which I was asking Soumya is that uh, in which module or in which, how many times, how many days it will take for a student to learn this expertise? <clears throat> So see, if you are teaching to someone, it's basically depend upon the mindset of that particular student, right? So the thing is, whatever you are teaching to him, if he's understanding what you are teaching, if it's continuously asking you questions regarding that, that sir, this is not proper, like mm -hmm. I'm not able to understand okay. this, then he can learn it faster. Okay. But you know, like some people have this mindset that, you know, like whatever is going on, simply they will keep there in their mind without any practice. 
and after that when the time comes like for uh, you know uh, yes, now we we have to learn for something yes. then the time is gone okay. there is like we, uh, we used to say right the the time won't come back so the thing is like that only so it's basically advice that uh, <clears throat> if whatever you are learning you should practice it side by side that's how you can learn if you are stuck in some problem you can definitely ask to the trainer next day okay right fine so that is how it is like uh, it happens so it's basically advice that uh, if you want to pursue this there is no time gap it basically depends on how much efficiently you learn new things okay yeah. it's a person can learn this within one month or within one week also okay so it is like that it is because this software is easy okay, okay. like it's basically easy to learn yeah so that is the thing so yeah uh, it's just like uh, i have seen uh, when we start learning a new skill set actually this is a in imminent uh, skill set you sh should have if you uh, if you are calling yourself an engineer but yeah when we we are learning new skills we are giving our effort and in the same priority, I think the priority matters and the interest factor matters because when you will be in the maths also, when you will be solving some question and if the answer is coming, you are getting more excited and go for the harder ones. So when the harder ones uh, where you get struck, then you close the book and you slip away. So it's just like the interest factor students. So if you are getting interested, like uh, the design which are assigned, if you are completing that, I think you can able to crack this because no questions or nothing is impossible when we are coming into this domain. So uh, we have one more questions. I think it is it is from the Mazair. And the question is, so what algorithm does SOLIDWORK use for mathematical model or topology optimization? <laughs> is it genetic? I, so, think, I think you are asking about is it generic or genetic? I think like both of works fine, both of the, okay. you know, words works fine. So basically there's no particular algorithm for this. Okay. Like inside of, uh, so genetic algorithm means, uh, you can see over here that it is showing running iteration. So right now we are at 39th of the iteration. So basically it reduces the mass. Okay. And it, and this is the final output. So we are at the output now. So you can see it has reduced 40% of the mass. Right. right. Okay. So also at 39th or let's say at 40th iteration, this is reducing most of the mass. So over here, you are getting one uh, table also, which is like yellow means must keep. So these yellow areas, which you can see, you should be keeping this. Okay. okay. If you are removing this, your structural integrity will be messed up. Okay. Right. But you can see this purple and blue regions also. It shows you okay to remove. So let me just show you. So you can see these blue areas over there. Okay, these are okay to remove. You can remove them. You can make them identical. Okay, you like whatever you are having on the right side, you can have that over the left side also. Right. Okay, so you can simply use them. You can simply use this particular model. You can simply see like all the different views okay all the different views of the model are there and you can see this outer line so this black outer line is the my initial model right right this this was my initial model let me just hide this you can see this is the initial model okay from this particular model what we have did we have reduced 40 percent of the mass so you can see this is the mass so right now calculated element mass you can see over on the top which is 2.8 kgs so this is the 2.8 kg mass, which, which was initially 4.47. Yes, yes. So we have reduced 40% of it. So it is going to be 2.8 kgs over there. Okay. So this is like how, uh, you can do for a topology optimization. You just have to set some boundary conditions of it. Okay. Right. You just have to set some boundary conditions. And when you are setting some boundary condition, it is basically let the software do the rest of the thing. Okay, it's just like a you know a very famous uh, term is there in uh, IT sector, which is GIGO. So GIGO means garbage in, garbage out. Okay, right. so it's basically like whatever you are inputting. Okay, if you are inputting something wrong, you are 
not getting the proper result. Okay. If you are applying something good, it is basically giving you the best output. Okay. So it is like that. So if you are applying all the conditions properly, then it is simply going to show you regarding that also. So I hope this is clear to you all. Yeah, uh, actually, even I got very uh, int intrigued by the things which we are using in the solid work. And the most important thing is uh, all the aspects, all the things uh, we are calculating, right? And we are putting it. So, so it's basically like, you know, force equals to mass into acceleration, yes. right? Any two values, if you know, in that particular equation, any two values, if you know, yes. you can calculate the third one. Exactly. Right. So the thing is, same goes with the softwares, like uh, softwares also. If you are applying one condition, like if, if you know force, you don't know the mass, you don't know the acceleration, you are getting, going to get nothing. Right. Right. If you want to calculate mass, you should be knowing about force and acceleration. Right. If you want to calculate about force, you should be knowing about the mass and acceleration. Right. So it is simply like that. If you basically, I am applying all the boundary conditions. Right. What I want from the system is the result of it. Right. So here I'm simply applying the boundary conditions after that, I want the results from it. So it's basically like that. If you are not applying the boundary conditions, how come it will give you the results? So it is like that. So uh, it's similar like you guys, uh, when you are doing the problems in the mechanical, I think heat transfer and RSE. So I think there you must be doing uh, the cycle conditions. There we are finding out the result, right? So it's the similar like that. Just the thing is, it is more practical because in engineering also, we haven't heard about this modeling. So we have actually an interesting questions about today's topic by Akas. So how can we say that topology is optimized component is cost effective because extra machining is required to remove the material and which will increase the cost. I think that's a genuine question. Yeah. Okay, so Akash, basically for this, we can say it is cost effective. So I'll tell you a few reasons of it. Okay, one is the performance of it. Okay, so without hampering with the performance, you are basically increasing the performance just by reducing the weight. Okay. Just by reducing the weights of the components. Let's say if you are having an assembly of five components. Mm -hmm. Okay, in those particular five components, what you are going to do, you are simply reducing all the, you know, weight of from all the five components. Basically, your, uh, you know, the performance of that particular assembly is going to increase. Now the question comes whether it is cost effective or not. Okay, definitely. Uh, since extra machine is machining is going to be done on this, so this mouse can cost me around, uh, you know, like five hundred, six hundred rupees. Right. Okay, but this is like for around 3000 or 4000 rupees right. why because only because this is this is a bit machine part okay. when we say as a cost effective we actually see for the larger uh broad areas okay so in broad areas means what if i make a die of this right right if i'm making a die for that particular component die is basically my one-time investment Correct. But the products which I'm achieving from that, let's say I'm achieving 5,000 units of it, or maybe 6,000 units from that particular die. It is one-time investment, right. but it is compensating all the manufacturing costs. Yes. Right. Okay. So that is basically how we can say that this is cost effective. If you are making a die for this, if you're making a die for this particular mouse, it is, you, you have to use extra material for it, first right. of all. Also, you cannot, uh, you know, like, uh, like for the surface finish as well. So over here, you have uh, incisions in this. Okay. Right. For these particular uh, mouse, you have incision for this. So if you are having incisions, basically what will happen? Uh, if you are pouring the liquid on it, the hot liquid on it, if you're pouring it, it is going to take that shape. So right. that this is a, actually how, yeah. Formed. The shape will be formed. The <laughs> other thing is if you are, certainly uh you know like making multiple units out of it then you can say that this is cost effective because okay. you're not throwing each and every unit into manufacturing after it right. so basically for you know like your materials let's say your bike swing arm is also there mm -hmm. let's say your knuckle is there 
okay let's say your a uh, few components in the chassis is there let's say your baw is also there so if you are making them cost effective you are, if you are doing topology optimization because these all materials go into die okay. like die casting they these all goes into die casting okay. once you are coming out of the like once you are taking that part out of the die casting it is first of all it is lightweight right. second it is uh, uh perform like the performance is not reduced in this case third it is efficient right. why we say it efficient because it is lightweight also the uh, you know the force which are applying it can simply go through it so that's how we can say it like this yeah so, actually i akash uh, to add on to it i will tell you that uh, the phone which we are using uh, in the previous one now you can see in the design aspects and in the weight aspects also it has been drastically decreased because nowadays if you will use any phone it is very much light weighted than what we are using uh, two years three years back so i think uh, for the longer run the optimization are needed in every sector not only uh, in the customizing sector of solid works of topology but in every sector they are continuously doing the optimization so moving on to the next questions uh, i think from sushma we have which modeling softwares is mostly used in the aerospace industries okay so in aerospace industry mostly see it depends on the company first yes. if it's an old company they will be using catia because solid works is a bit new towards the you know the generation yes, exactly they will be using catia if you are coming to solid works they will be simply using the uh, you know the part of the solid works for it okay so the thing is like that it depends on the companies to companies which uh, you know in which company you are so depending upon that they will choose the software okay so you have to see for it because if you are seeing various startups they are going with like solid works fusion 360 is also there they are going with the new year so uh, new year softwares okay yeah. so for the new generation softwares which are like uh, you know like because startups you know might not have that much of funds right yeah. so funding issue is might might be there so basically to take the licensing of that particular software they have yeah. to increase the funds for it yeah. <clears throat> so that is the thing so majorly i think uh, so small it can be said that uh, universally accepted software are being incorporated in aerospace industry so solid works and catia so these are i have mostly seen this software in the industry and coming to that uh, i think we are at the end of the sessions so the more most thing which i will like to add in this session that uh, in the era of designing in the era of designing i think the most important thing is uh, to explore as many as software because as somya said you cannot predict which company is having the license because they will be only in taking the students uh, who have the skill set of a or b or c software so they won't be telling you that we have license for this for this we are looking they will be directly opening up the interviews for those for that reason it is advisable you to have the knowledge of as many as software because you are getting a four years of engineering time and in the four years definitely you can upskill onto the very basics to intermediate level then you have to explore more on this software so i think uh, vaidant has a question sir should we do freelancing in design software <clears throat> so definitely vaidant if you want to do freelancing you can you are free to do so okay the thing is if you are doing freelancing basically you are upskilling yourself you are basically you know uh, seeing different getting different projects and then up, according to it you are applying your designing skills on that so this is exactly how like that you can uh, you know be able to uh, do in the freelancing job and if you are searching for a job then this freelancing part basically definitely going to help you a lot so yeah. like that you can simply see so i will tell you whether so if you are upskilled to a level certain level i think then you should go for freelancing because the freelancing terms comes that you are already an expert and you can provide them a proper skill set or the services so i think you should watch out that if you are uh, upskilled to that level or not 
सो आकाश ओके ओके वी हैव वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सुजय सुजीत शाह when will be the vehicle design and analysis course starts because i already registered for that till now no class is conducted so sujit i think the information from iit kanpur uh, i'll be sharing you uh, i think from our team you must have received the details still again i am sharing you the details so the classes are set to start from first week of august and in the website also you can see the details of those courses so those classes are set to start from 1st of august you will get the necessary information in your registered mail id and you can reach out to your respective uh, coordinators and they will be guiding you throughout the course so basically uh, about the modules and everything you can reach out to us by the mail okay so i think we are at the end of the session and uh, it was a enlightening sessions many of the students they got a proper road map how to be a design engineer and what are the things and norms and why the topology optimization is right now required in the industry because uh, there is so much of gap between what we are learning in the btech and bachelors of engineering and colleges and what right now industry demands so uh, the ending notes somya if you like to add <clears throat> so it's basically like even if you are pursuing uh, like in the design field or maybe if you want to pursue your career as a design design engineer it's basically required that you should be upskilling yourself first of all yeah. how to upskill so again i think we all know the answers over there right. so you can also see like uh, sky skill academy over there so you can right. simply definitely uh you know check out us and uh, look for uh, the courses which are there apart from that the major thing is even though if you are learning from somewhere you must be practicing there right so right. because there is a very famous quote again like practice makes a man perfect right. so that is the thing like even if you are uh, if you are not practicing it basically you are going to forget it right, right. so <clears throat> again like uh, i would like to give like during our childhood so when we are learning some tables right, right. so we used to uh, you know like repeat them uh, many a times right right we uh, used to recite them right yeah. so like 2 ones are 2 2 twos are 4 we used to say like that yeah. right that's how it gets uh, you know as a uh, chart in our mind that 2 two twos are 4 oh. 2 two twos are is not 6 right so that's how it gets repeated why why it gets uh, printed over there because we are uh, you know like continuously reciting that reciting that but the thing is for uh, the software also it is the same okay. because you are visualizing what you are doing yeah. so if you are doing one command again and again if you are doing uh, you know like different commands again and again that's how you are getting good at it okay so uh, i think uh, that sums up because uh, with practice i think uh, any sort of skill set is easily achievable and so is the job because you will be having uh, you will be having to expose yourself only once before the recruiters so i don't think you would like to uh, give them an improper idea so it's better or it's advisable to upskill to that level because if you are in first year and second year i think you have ample amount of time you you should start upskilling now but if you are in final year and pre final year or have passed out i think uh, the better option is that you should go for the professional courses uh, which involves the skill set of all the domains at once and then you enter into the industry so we are having bunch of courses i think you should check out at our website www.skyskill.com and you can see uh, the sky skill with double y so you should not go for single y and with that i think we are at the end of the session so i thank mr somya chaturvedi <laughs> to enhance all the skill set or to guide you in the solid works modules so thank you tanmay for having me on this session
So I'll look forward for a more such session and to interact with all these young minds. Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you everyone for joining in. So thank you.